Well, for more analysis on the breakdown of the nuclear treaty and other political stories coming out of the United States this week, we're joined by Professor Ed Blakely, who's a US political commentator and former White House staffer. Thanks for coming in this morning, Ed. Thank you. Regarding this arms treaty, what's the potential fallout now that we've had this news from the US and then Russia's response? Well, let's take it from the beginning. Why now? The president's in trouble politically. He needs a diversion. This has been going on since the Obama years. That complaint has been on the table. But he needs now to show he's not taking anything from the Russians. And he's shown it. I doubt if he even knows the details about this treaty. And the treaty may have been violated. We don't know. But the wrong thing to do is say, we're pulling out. The right thing to do is say, we will pull out if da, 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 da. That puts the Russians on their heels. Right now, they can pull out and have no consequences. So I think this diversionary move actually hurts us, the United States. It hurts the European allies. And the Russians are advanced by it because they can now, behind this, do whatever they want. Uh, you know, uh, what is the actual allegation against the Russians? Essentially, that they've just been thumbing their nose for years at this treaty. Well, no, they haven't. In the beginning, they really respected it. They destroyed armaments, uh, mis installations were closed, and the like. Over the years, because of their new ambitions, uh, particularly in the Crimea, they have put in more missile installations. Those missile installations have always been able to reach Turkey and much of Europe. So we've been against that. Now they're stepping it up with longer range missiles. And that is really dangerous. So there is a danger here. And the pressure on the Russians when you say we're withdrawing from the pact is what? They can do whatever they want. The pressure should be some sanctions of some kind. On the back door, we're letting Russians back into the United States. Uh, a couple of Russians, big Russian banks, have been authorized to come back in. So. Let's not play a game here. This is very serious business for the Europeans, and there needs to be a really calling of a Paris or Vienna talks to deal with this. That's what would scare the Russians. The president has indicated, President Donald Trump has indicated that he is open to negotiations. Is there a potential for negotiations? And could there be, I guess, a time when both parties return to the table? Oh, I think so. Uh, but. Let's not do it this way. It's the way it was done. I have no doubt there have been violations. But the way you go at that in the normal political thing, talk to our allies. Let's come together. It's going to be NATO and the United States pressuring the Russians. Yes, within the next couple of years, they'll come back to the table, uh, maybe less time than that, and work out something. Russia can't afford this. They can't afford any more sanctions. And it's very expensive to make these arms. As you say, though, this will be viewed pretty dimly in Europe, although there has been some NATO backing for the president's plan. Um, yes. I suppose at the moment they have really not much say in the matter. Well, that's the problem. We're not arm in arm here. And that allows the Russians to do a lot of things. Remember, they've, they've got dirty business on their hands in Great Britain with those poisonings and the like. So uh, if we're going to corner the Russians, let's do it together. Mm. Now, on another topic, despite no, there was no resolution over the funding for Donald Trump's border wall, but that partial government shutdown was at least temporarily lifted, now Donald Trump seems to be indicating that further talks are a waste of time, considering there was that real deadlock between the Re Republicans and the Democrats, that there wasn't any progress being made. Is the president right saying that talks were a waste of time? Well, the president's saying this, I was defeated by Nancy Pelosi. I'm not going to let that happen again. So I'm putting my stake in the ground. I don't think this will work. I'm going to put my uh, emergency order out there and win this. What he's doing, though, is putting a stake in the heart of middle America. People aren't coming across the border and jumping to Minnesota. But that's what hurts when you close the government. And so he's pushing his own polls down by this action. So you think he's sort of he's, backing away from another fight? He, he, he's trying to make it so that he can call this emergency. That fails, and he'll blame the Democrats. I did everything I can. 
because he knows he has no gas in this tank. He has nothing to offer the Democrats. Although he seems to be saying now that he'll try and go it alone. Is that an option for him? No, unless we suspend democracy. So, the Congress so, is supposed to make laws, not the president. Yeah, so, so what tools does he have in his arsenal? Well, he has a bully pulpit. Uh, he could actually negotiate with the Democrats and come to agreement. What do the Democrats want? They want the dreamers, right? They want a comprehensive uh, program when it comes to immigration, right? And they want the president to start paying attention to some of the issues he's not paid attention to, like food stamps and other kinds of things. These are not hard, but his base wants to see him be tough. And that's what he's doing. He's just being tough. The Republicans don't want this. We may see a situation where there's an override. Both houses vote by a two-thirds majority for a bill the president doesn't like, and he says, I'll wash my hands of this. This is what the Democrats have done to us. I think that's where we'll end. Going out again is really dangerous at this point. Now, another topic. The Virginia governor is in hot water. What, tell us why. Well, uh, in a photo uh, where he says he might have been in the picture, he doesn't know, it was a blackface uh, person and a person in a Ku Klux Klan outfit uh, in his dorm room or someplace like this. So this is back in college. Back in college, 1984. Uh, he says that was a big mistake. Uh, no matter what had happened, even if he weren't in the photo, uh, he's sorry, he's apologized. But remember, not that long ago, the Democrats were throwing out people who had similar incidents with women 34 years ago. So the Democrats are really in bind here. And the NAACP the National Association of Advancement of Colored People, has called for his resignation. He is toast. Uh, so no, you think that pressure will just keep building? That pressure will keep building because he's getting it from the left and the right. The Republicans want him out, and now his own party wants him out. So no matter what happens, it's only a four-year job, mm. uh, but I think it'll be less than that. I mean, something like blackface has been a no-no in, in the US for, for some time now, but do you think if this photo emerged of something that he did in college maybe five years ago, ten years ago, there, there might be a different reaction? Oh, no. I think this is, uh, this is, this is really a no, 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 no. Mm. Uh, goes back in the 60s. If he did something like that. So even back then, back then he should have known exactly what he, was going on. He knew what was going yeah. on. And so I think the these are symbolic issues. Uh, he's not a bad man. He did the wrong thing, and it's unfortunate, but that's the nature of politics, isn't it? Ed Blakely, we'll have to leave it there. Thanks so much for coming in this morning. Thank, Thank you. you.